Hey, welcome on in, guys. Tobin here with you, and thanks for checking out the channel. Hope you're doing fantastic out there. If you guys could subscribe, that would be great. Appreciate you stopping by. Hit that like button, and uh, if you don't do any of those things, I mean, just don't tell me about it, all right? Just watch the video and move on. Anyway, I got the goosies, which, uh, you know, sometimes I've been accused of being a loose goose floozy. Sometimes I've been accused of being wild heat coyote, meet meet, always falling for the tunnel, not realizing it's just a black hole painted on a rock. However, I apologize for none of that because even with the thunder crashing, even with the rain pouring, I can get the goosies over some Nikola Jovic quotes, dude. And I was reading this in the Sun Sentinel today from Ira Winderman and the, the title alone was enough to get me goosed up because of the Serbian Terminator, dude. Because if there's one thing I've wanted to see from Nico and what is going to be the next step of him, it is what is he going to do on offense when he gets some mismatches? What is he going to do when it's not just take the ball off the rim and run? What is he going to do when it's not just stand in the corner and hit threes? I think he's shown that ability. But what is the next step for him? And... I think that reading this stuff out of Ira's column today uh, was pretty great because, first of all, I love Nico. This guy is a delight. He works his ass off and it's just a good vibe. You know, I remember having Karan on the show a couple of weeks ago and he's just like, you know, just his voice in the locker room, you know, like this guy is just is, is great to have around. And Karan was also talking about just how much growth he's seen from him and the, just the ability to be there for his country and play hurt was, uh, was just a sign of mental strength growth from Nico. Well, you, you saw like his availability <clears throat> was a huge factor um, and he's worked on his body. And obviously that's no question now. Uh, and even, you know, having the ankle injury that he sustained throughout the course of training for the Olympics and finding a way after being told he was going to be out, anywhere from six to eight weeks. And that that wasn't even an option for him to still find a way to be present and available and have some type of impact in their run. That was remarkable. So you know that from a mental standpoint, I saw growth right there. Now, just getting more reps, getting more time out there, I think he's going to have a significant impact on our team this year because of his versatility, because he can make plays, because he can defend multiple positions, as you saw you know, we were switching a lot with Nico. Sometimes we was in the catch coverage, but we switched a lot with him. So his ability to do those things is a clear advantage for us offensively and defensively. And then he's just a likable guy. Um, his voice and his experience, even though he's 21, he has a, a, a lot of basketball knowledge. So his voice in the locker room is going to be extremely important. So now with him uh, speaking in this article, um, and, uh, and, and being asked about what has been the focus as he prepares for training camp. He said, quote, I would say the biggest thing I was working on the most was working in the low post when I have a smaller guy on me. I just have to punish them. That's something that I think will help this team a lot. So I would say that's the main thing for me, other than still being able to spread the floor and everything else I do. Agreed. And I got to tell you, he's a moose. This dude is this dude is only 21 years old and to, like I, I you remember the frame um if you guys want to see a good comparison speaking of Quran like there's this uh TikTok or Instagram that I have on my account you guys can go look at it but it's uh just just go look at like what baby Nikola Jovic looks like compared to uh, a year development in the heat system and the guy works his ass off the guy really really works on his body um, they have tested him a lot. They knew like th this was a different type of prospect that they were getting a hold of, right? Like they hadn't delved into the waters of international prospect and especially one that hadn't played college basketball over here. No experience, no NFL, uh, no NBA experience. Rather the lightning's got me shook. Jeez. Got a storm brewing out there. Um, and so Hearing this from Nico, I just think that he has just a keen awareness of like what he has to improve upon. And I love that about him. I love his self-awareness about things that 
absolutely have to give it up. And I think that he has the capabilities of doing that. I think that he has the capabilities of, of being strong. Even even Quran was talking about you know the, the ability they trust him defensively because they think he's stout. They think he's a strong kid. And that that's only going to get bigger. And I do think that one of the things that I like about him being with the Serbian team and being around a guy like Joker and seeing the kind of growth that that guy has had in his career, which has been incredible, um, I, I do think that there's a lot of key ingredients here where this guy could have a, a special season, right? Because I am of the, I am wondering, like out of the Heat, young bucks, like of the guys that they have, and I'm, I'm taking the rookies out of it, but let's let's put this on of Nicola and Jaime, Jaime Hawkins Jr. Which guy is going to end up being the better player? Which guy is going to end up having the bigger impact? Because Jaime very clearly is further ahead, but he's older. You know, he's older. He had the college experience. He's got a very polished offensive game, beautiful offensive game. But, you know, in some of the quotes that he's had, he's talked about how he has put a big focus on you know, knocking down threes and even being a go-to guy to shut the other team's best uh, best player down. Now, I don't know if Jaime is going to be able to shut down the guy's best player, but the idea that that awareness is there, that he's got to get that stuff done. If you were to ask me, like, what's more important, I would go with um, the shooting, to be honest with you. I think that that's going to be a very important element of his game. Um, because I do, especially with this team in particular, just because like Nico, there's going to be times where, Hey, where does he go and get his shot? You know, where is his opportunity going to come from? But they, there were times last year, a lot of times last year, Spo was giving that baptism by fire to Jaime Jaquez and that he was throwing him to the wolves. There'd be games. He was guarding to rant. There was a game. He had a lot of success against uh, guarding LeBron James, um, Tatum like he he was he was getting thrown to the wolves by Eric Spolster and getting tested and tested a lot so it is it's going to be really interesting seeing what they turn into but I do think with Nico I mean you look at the size you look at his facilitating ability you look at a lot of those little areas of the game that he brings to the table it's just intriguing to see like what happens when all the when all the pieces come together, what what type of player is that? Is he ever going to be a guy who can be a go-to guy? Hey, we've seen the games where he gets hot from three and, and he can flirt with 30. Um, we know that he can rebound. We know that he moves fast. We know that he's unselfish. And I think with Jaime, we know that he's got that stuff down already, right? Like he's already got the 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 pretty footwork, uh, the, as good a footwork as as there is on the team when it comes to moving and getting the shot in a comfortable place, tons of patience to go. You know, it's not, you know, you don't want to put it in the ilk. I know they compare themselves a lot to Jimmy and his game. He loves DeMar DeRozan and, and D Wade and Kobe, but you know, and it, you know, it's not Luca. I'm not going to be crazy and compare him to him, but he's got a lot of, a, a lot of stuff in the bag. And now it's like, all right, can he get the other accent pieces? to to kind of finish the living room. You know, can he can he can he put that together? So Jovic in this IR article, he also says being able to punish every mismatch, I think is a really important part of the game for me. And that's what I keep working on and try to do as much as I can. Um and it is one of those things where I really if he does have that awareness, if he does bring that to the table this year, that I think is what intrigues most Heat fans. You know, it is one of those things where, look, maybe, you know, Jimmy's in this crazy attack mode and he plays like nutty and he's scoring 24, 25 points a game. But Jimmy kind of is what he is in the regular season. We know, we know what he's going to provide. Um, when you're at 35 years old, we, we, I think we know what to expect. Tyler, it's a question of health. Bam. The X factor for him is the three ball, right? Like how many more of those is he going to get up a year? And what does that look like? Is he going to take this Chris Bosh ascension in volume for uh, for three-point shots? But these guys, these two right here, these are, I think, what, what gets you 
tuning in every single night, right? Like if you're really a Heat fan and you're watching the night in and the night out and you're going to be watching the Pistons games and I'm sure if you guys watch my channel, you're pretty diehard as it is um, and and that you do watch every game pretty hardcore, but the things that exhaust you every single week and the things that, you know, you bang your head against the wall, Jimmy doesn't give enough effort, Tyler is just one-dimensional, Bam doesn't, uh, isn't, isn't a go-to scorer, all right, well, complaints valid or unvalid, right? Like you've been banging your head against the wall with these same things basically for four or five years. These guys are new. And I think that's what's exciting, right? Like when we talk about going after the whales and we talk about the trades and what the heat can can do to, to better their situations, we're talking about new. We want a little bit of new. We want a little spice. And I do think this crop of young players, and in this case, I'll include the rookies, Nico, Jaime, Kalel, Pella, you know, some of the guys, I'm not doing this out in the field, I swear, some of the guys um, from the from the summer league team, all of those pieces, you're going to be thrilled to see what the developments are night in and night out. Like, what are the new things they're bringing to the game? And if this is something that Nico is going to bring to the table, if he's going to go and punish guys, Hey, who doesn't love reading that? Who isn't going to be excited to see that that Nikola Jovic is going to bring that type of ferocity to the table using his strength, using his size, and being that kind of player for the Miami Heat? That would be absolutely huge.